Good afternoon and sorry for that interruption. Thank you once again for joining us. Holly Shields here for Calkine TV. Welcoming you all to another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. On today's show, we're joined by Charlie Gunningham, Managing Editor and Startup News, a digital publishing service dedicated to celebrating the achievements and successes of Western Australian startups and entrepreneurs. Welcome to the show, Charlie. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Holly. It's great to be here. Pleasure's all mine. Great to have you on. So to kick things off, in today's pandemic-induced volatile climate, many businesses are struggling to get by. Though despite this, Startup News and perhaps you yourself take pride in supporting startup spirits in WA. So what was your inspiration behind launching this company? Well, thanks, Holly. I'm not the original founder. I took over in 2018, but it was started in 2013 by a couple of startup guys here in West Australia um, who'd found that it quite difficult to get the news of the Perth startup scene out to normal startup channels that tend to focus on eastern states. There is actually a flourishing startup scene over here in Perth, West Australia. I actually did a startup myself back in 1999. If you remember the dot coms, I, I set up a, um, I suppose, a bit like realestate.com before realestate.com, a one called aussiehome.com back in the day. And we ran it for 10 years before we were acquired. And um, so I've had 20 years in the startup scene here in Perth. It's a flourishing ecosystem, I'm glad to say. All right. So it's flourishing, which is good to hear. And um, mm. how would you describe the co-working spaces in Western Australia? Yeah, probably the first uh, co-working space of, of the sort of modern type was Space Cube that's set up in 2012 by Brodie McCulloch. But there are now actually 55, would you believe, 55 co-working spaces around Western Australia and Perth. And about 40% of them are outside Perth, are in the regions. So uh, it's become a way of, um, I suppose, getting your startup going, not just to hire a seat or uh, a table or an, or an office, but really it's the community that is around the co-working spaces. And Space Cubed have been one of the most successful at that. They've now got, uh, I think, five, six, or even seven different locations that they either own or manage around Perth and uh, the CBD and also outside of Perth. So there's a good ecosystem here. I've, I've plotted it on Startup News. If you go to startupnews.com.au and click o Ecosystem, we've actually got 147 different co-working spaces, funding groups, accelerator programs and the like that service the tech startup early stage sector. That's incredible. It sounds like a really thriving ecosystem you have there. Mm. It and is. And it's great to see. I've sort of grown up in it myself the last 20 years. Right. So you've seen it evolve, I imagine. Definitely so. There was no co-working space, uh, Holly. There were no accelerators when I started my startup 20 years ago at all. In fact, we had to go around and try and find like-minded, crazy dot-com entrepreneurs such as ourselves uh, to get together. And we formed something called eGroup, which still meets to this day. In fact, that's one of the, the groups that meets up to give each other emotional support and advice about getting your startup going. Um, and now there's some angel groups, um, not just one in Perth, but one in Bunbury called Southwest Angels. There's a little bit of VC, not a lot of venture capital. Um, there's one group called Better Labs, and there's a, a few others now bubbling along and others I've heard that are getting going. Um, but it's, it's a good positive scene. I suppose we're used to being isolated in Perth, and so we look after our own. We look after each other. Well, that is always good to hear. So in your opinion, what are the factors that are currently posing a challenge for those startups? Well, a couple, probably, Holly. Um, over the last year, obviously, we've had the pandemic. Um, at the time it hit, I was working for a federal government startup fund called Accelerating Commercialization, and we um, rang around all the companies that we'd given federal government money to in forms of a grant to make sure that they were okay. And we found broadly that a third of them were unaffected by COVID. A third of them were affected a little bit, but within a few months they were fine. And a third of them were severely affected and it was sort of almost life-threatening for the business. But I'm sad to say, glad to say that within a few months, sort of the, this time last year, um, once we're two or three months into COVID, most of those had got over the worst, as in fact had 
the state and we've been relatively unaffected by COVID even though last week we had a um, lockdown and this week we're all wearing masks uh, even though we're back in the office. Um, so that's sort of one thing. The other thing that probably is unique to Perth is a lack of early stage venture funding. We don't have the venture capital that you'd have and you'd see on the Eastern Seaboard. And um, Perth is a great place, Holly, if you want to fund a mine or if you want to do commercial property development. But if you're trying to fund a startup, it's pretty much few and far between. Um, I looked at uh, the total amount of money that was invested in WA companies last year, which was around $8 billion in WA companies. Um, I'm very sad to say only 0.3% of that, 0.3% went to early stage private sector tech businesses. So it's, it's woefully small and um, it needs, it, we need more early stage fund. Not every startup needs funding, but uh, th some do and those that do need the rocket fuel to fuel their growth. Well, those figures are certainly surprising there. In your opinion, mm. how can we get that rocket fuel for the growth? What needs to change for that to happen? Oh, uh, Holly, if only I knew the answer. Someone <laughs> could tell me the answer. I've been looking at it for 20 years and it hasn't got much better. Um, you know, back in the dot-com days, it was maybe weirdly easier to raise money. I was a school teacher and set up a crazy dot-com but raised a couple hundred thousand dollars in a few weeks. Look, there is money around. Perth's a fairly wealthy place, I think. I heard a stat. I'm, no long, I'm not sure if this is true, but I'll keep repeating it, that I think Perth has more self-made millionaires than any other city in the world. Um, we have a average income, I think is 30 or 35% higher than the Australian average. So we're a fairly wealthy community, um, but we're just not used to making money in tech or funding early stage tech. We're used to making money in mining and in property. Nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with that at all. That, that fires a lot of innovation. There's lots of good mining tech and prop tech businesses around, but um, people I suppose aren't used to making money by um, investing early in tech and therefore because they're not used to doing it they don't do it and because they don't do it they don't have good experiences from it and therefore the wheel hasn't really turned but I think it's changing slowly um, and there's now talk of more funds being set up but um, for, for your average plucky early stage startup entrepreneur it's still pretty lean pickings mm, all right. well, that is quite unfortunate to hear but hopefully we do get that shift that you're hoping for yeah, I think so. Um, I think more and more people are aware of the sector. They just don't know how to start. They don't know how to value a business and they haven't had experience of doing it. So, that, I mean, nor did I when I started, nor does any investor before they start. So, I mean, the thing to do is to get started, I suppose, and go down to Space Cubed and get involved in some accelerator programs and maybe some angel groups and, and start investing and, and seeing how you can help. because. For startups, as you know, Holly, it's not just the money, it's the mentoring, it's the advice, it's the opening doors. And someone like me, an old startup guy like me, um, I've been through the, out, the other side and been successful. I think it's important for those people then to give back and mentor the next generation. So we're seeing more of that happening. We're still early. I'm impatient, but it, it is happening slowly. And I'm sure the more we get successes, you know, we claim Canva as one of ours. I remember Mel and Cliff from Canva when they started in 2012 and they're now worth $20 billion. Um, um, obviously they moved to Sydney almost immediately. We couldn't keep them, but they stayed in Australia. And there are some good startups coming out of Perth and that, you know, Health Engine and others and Sector have done well. And there's others like Isatana and IntelliCare that have listed on the stock market in the last 12 months. So there is more happening. And as more of those succeed, then I suppose that'll give more confidence to the investors coming through for the next round. All right. Yep. Fingers crossed there. And um, just on that note, with uh, with kickstarting the startups, how would you suggest people position their startups for success? Well, I think the most important thing, Holly, is to think about the customer. I think um, too many people do whinge about, like me, whinge about oh, there's no money around and we can't raise money for our startup. Look, the best money always is from customers. So if you have a, if you're a founder out there and you reckon you've seen a customer problem that can be solved elegantly, elegantly with technology, uh, and the, the best thing is, you know, just build something, 
work with your early customers, get them paying you something, try and uh, spin it out and, and scale it up organically. The best funding for any business, of course, is customer income, is customer revenue, making sales. So if you can do that, then by the time if you do need money, you're going to be worth more, you're going to be giving less of your money away. So I always tell clients, look, um, those in the tech businesses, work with your customers, love them to bits, knock their socks off, wow them, five-star stuff, um, and then hopefully they'll come along with you for the ride as you scale and grow, and you'll get more and more customers on. You know, love, love the ones you're with, I suppose, and, and work hard on getting that product market fit with your customers. Absolutely. I think that's really solid advice there. Now, I understand you do a podcast, Startup West. Could you tell us a bit about that? I do. So Startup News is a site where you can, if you look at the, if you want to be interested in WA Startups, we, we publish stories on startups. Nothing unusual about that. And then three years ago, um, when I took over the Startup News in 2018, because I'm an ex-property media guy. In fact, my latest venture is is the Property Tribune, which is property and media combined. So I took over Startup News. One thing I wanted to do was a podcast and get the startup founders in WA to tell their stories, partly as inspiration to people who are doing it tough on their own, that there's other people like me struggling with these issues too, and also to put them on a pedestal and, and highlight some of the better ones. So if wherever you get your podcast from, Holly, or the people listening to this, you just plug in Startup West, Startup West, you will get to our podcast. So I think we've had about 50 or so episodes. They're not too long. They're just a commute, about 30 minutes. So you can listen to it on a commute. And it's uh, quite fun, uh, different ones. We've had Health Engine on. We've had Sector on. We've had Functionally and other ones that I think are coming up. The next rung of successful WA startup. So if you want to hear from some of them, hear some of their stories, some of their challenges, some of their mistakes, things they wish they'd known when they started, then Startup West Podcast is the place to go. That's terrific, and I think it's obviously really important to hear from the best. Hmm, absolutely right. Yeah, it's inspiring for the for the for everybody else, right? And um, you know, I've done it myself, so I've made loads of mistakes, got the badge, got the T-shirt, and it's important to maybe help those others coming through, not to make the same mistakes you did, and to <laughs> highlight some of the gaps and things that they can improve on. Definitely, definitely. But apart from the podcast, do you have anything else coming up at uh, Startup News that our audience could look forward to? Yes. Well, one thing we've done is plot the ecosystem. So if you, that, that's quite interesting. So as I say, at the moment, it's rather a boring Airtable. Uh, I don't know if you know Airtable, but it's one way. It's like glorified, webified. Uh, spreadsheets so it's a bit of a boring list at the moment but you can filter it and that's quite clever we want to really map out the ecosystem with who's involved and who's in the zoo and that would make anyone hitting the ecosystem um, aware of uh, what's going on um, we've launched a new website for the podcast startupwest.com.au that just la launched last week um, but just more of the same really in um, just throwing a light on the interesting and wonderful and quite um, quite large um, Perth ecosystem in, re in regards to startups over this part of the world. Right, definitely. First of all, congratulations on the launch of Startup West. And um, I hope to see that expansion of the new startups on your map. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in, love the sector and uh, really enjoy giving back and also promoting very proud of the sector and there's lots of people doing that not just me uh, that give back and mentor and advise and um, I think I, you talked to my good friend Peter van Brookham recently uh, what he does at Tech Board is great um, but there's a lot of people pushing the sector and really helping uh, helping kicking it along and hopefully finding the next Canva right <laughs> Well, that is always good to hear, and we'll definitely be keeping an eye on that, especially at Startup West. So on that note, it's just thank about you. time to wrap up. But I've got to say thank you so much for joining us today. It's been great to hear insights. Great to win you, Holly, and thanks for everything you do as well for the business community. Great to have you on. And thanks for your time as well, viewers. Stay tuned for more live updates. And as we say here, stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine.